you, John, and thanks to everyone who's attending today. Um, we're, we have the agenda displayed on the screen for you, so we're going to jump right into our content and talk about this topic of competition. And, and here's the reality that I suspect everyone knows this already. Um, if you are having success in your marketplace, you probably have competition. Your success actually encourages competition, so it doesn't really matter what your industry or company or what geography you're competing in. Uh, there's probably a competitor out there lurking. If they haven't made themselves known yet, they will at the right time. Uh, and they are, they're probably watching what you're doing. And conversely, you're probably watching what your competitors are doing too. So it is the reality of being in business. We're going to have competition. I want to start by just talking about what competition is. Because I think it's important that we have the right perspective on what a competitor is or maybe who a competitor is. So the most obvious definition is what you see on the screen. A competitor is any company that provides a replacement product. So if I'm in the market for a jet ski, uh, I may look at one company and then another, and those two companies will view themselves as competing for my business. Uh, but in reality, what may be going on is I might just be looking for something to have some outdoor recreational fun with. And so therefore, uh, a substitute product like an ATV, maybe something I would consider as well as a jet ski. Uh, and if you want to broaden the definition even further, then we realize that a competitor is simply anything or anyone that can draw customers away from you. So, so if I'm just looking for something to keep me busy, I may be looking for the toy that's on the right side of the screen. So it really pays to have the broadest possible view of competition because if you don't, you might end up being surprised um, at where your competition will come from. So when you're analyzing competition, you definitely want to have a very broad view of the competitive landscape. What I'd like to do uh, right now is then talk about contrasting views of competition. And, and here's probably the dominant one, and that simply is the view that competitors are evil. Uh, these competitors are out there in the marketplace uh, with their business practices, sometimes winning deals from us, taking food out of our babies' mouths, and it's a war. In fact, the uh, quote on the screen is from a 19th century Prussian military theorist, Karl von Clausewitz, uh, who said famously that business is war. And indeed it is. And that certainly is a view of competition, which, to be honest, is a valid view. Uh, but there's another view I want us to consider as well. And that's this view, that competition drives innovation. Uh, and the reality is, if we find ourselves competing in a market with no competition, our incentive to innovate is very low. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, however, if we find ourselves in a marketplace where the competition is intense, it also can have a negative effect on innovation. But as you see from the graph on this slide, there's kind of a balance somewhere in the middle where the right number of competitors in a market uh, really drive innovation. And to be honest, that benefits everyone, both the buyers and the sellers in that market. So let's take a look at what competition really does, because I think this is important to understand. The first thing it does is it validates your idea. And we've heard that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And that's definitely true. So if you have a good idea and suddenly you find competition out there in the marketplace, it's simply validation that you have a good one. The other thing that competition does is it helps educate your target market. So if you are promoting a product or a product category and you have competition, one of the things that's actually beneficial is you're going to discover that your competitors are out there spending their marketing dollars trying to educate the same pool of prospects that you are about the benefits of your product category. So that's actually beneficial to a degree. Uh, having competition certainly battles complacency. It's perhaps the best antidote I know of for corporate complacency. And finally, the differentiation piece. Uh, having competitors forces you to always stay on top of your game when it comes to providing differentiation of what you sell. Uh, and, and put it more bluntly, sometimes you, you have to innovate or die because of your competition. So what I want to do now is kind of turn a corner. Let's just talk about what I think the smart marketer should, how the smart marketer should view competition. 
Um, one thing I think is very important is for marketers to be leaders in their companies in terms of shaping the company's culture on competition and mentor the corporation on how we really should view our competitors. The second thing I would say is we need to be as marketers leaders when it comes to equipping our company with a strategy for dealing with our competitors. And so that means we need to analyze competition. Uh, and I would say we don't want to overanalyze competition. You can go too far. There certainly is a law of diminishing returns. Uh, let the competitors overanalyze you. But do enough analysis so you can have a good plan. So let me talk to, about what I mean when it comes to shaping the culture on competition. I have three rules that I think are pretty important when it comes to competition. The first one is this one. And it says, don't disparage your competitors. Um, and this one's off violated. I've seen a lot of companies that, uh, especially on the sales front, where it's just an easy thing to do, is to go out there and just trash talk or badmouth your competitors. Um, I think people who've been in marketing for any length of time understand that, that that backfires and your customers will lose respect for you. The best approach, really, is to compete on your strengths and not on the competitor's weaknesses, at least not in terms of using their, their weaknesses to disparage them. So you're probably wondering, well, Jerry, then what do we say about our competitors? Um, you know, I've got a graphic on the screen. It's a little bit tongue-in-cheek that talks about comparing two, two products, one, of course, being a stone, the other is a smartphone. But uh, product comparisons are great ways to compete. Uh, just because I recommend that we don't disparage our competitors doesn't mean we can't compete vigorously when it comes to comparing product features and functions. Um, so to, to give you a metaphor, if we're talking about selling cars, for example, um, it wouldn't be appropriate to say, well, that car that you're thinking about buying from my competitor is a piece of junk. I'll be surprised if you can get out of the parking lot without having pieces of the transmission falling out as you leave. A better way to say it would be our product, our vehicle, has a 100,000-mile five-year powertrain warranty, and our competitors do not have that. So you kind of see what it looks like to compete on features and functions. So that's rule number one is don't disparage your competitors. Take the high road because in the end, it really works best for you. Rule number two uh, is very much like rule number one, and that is don't disparage your competitors internally. It's one thing to, to externally control your communications, but internally I think you have to practice the same discipline because if you make a habit of starting to disparage your competitors internally, what you're really starting to do is enable your team to use competitive pressure as a failure, as an excuse for failure to perform. So if you don't follow rule number one, you really can't expect to enforce and have people follow rule number two. And really what you want to do is you want to orient your team to market and to sell on value and on your differentiation. It's very easy to get in the habit of running competitors down and disparaging them. Um, and because of the reasons we talked about on the previous slide, that can really backfire. So now let's talk about rule number three. And again, it's similar to rule number two, and that is don't blame your competitors for your failure to perform. And if you, you have to you know, own up sometimes you do from a product management perspective, is it the fault of the competition if you didn't put the right features into your product plan, if you didn't give more thought and attention to how you position your products, if you didn't price it correctly or carefully or even estimate demand well, um, it's probably not your competitor's fault. And so it's important, I think, to, to take ownership of these things, accept responsibility if your competitors do a better job of product management than you do. 